Hello. In this video, we will be considering environmental management accounting. We will start off by considering why traditional management accounting techniques are inadequate for highlighting environmental impact and controlling environmental cost. We'll then go on to have a look at some different techniques to better deal with the measurement and therefore management of environmental costs. There are various different types of environmental costs. Let's consider how the conventional treatment leads to them being ignored or otherwise mismanaged. Firstly, conventional costs. For example, heating and other energy costs and water consumption. Often these costs aren't highlighted in the traditional accounting system. They're considered to be part of general overheads. And because of this, they're not highlighted in management reporting and so management get no visibility of the size of these costs or any incentive to manage them specifically. Then there's contingent costs. For example, potential future compliance costs or the decommissioning costs to eliminate the environmental impact of the closure of a site. These often occur in the future and as such are not considered by management who may have a myopic view. There's also relationship costs. The production of environmental information to communicate our environmental impact and management to stakeholders costs money. These costs are usually invisible to managers as environmental information production is considered as part of general information production. And finally, reputational costs. For example, lost sales as a result of bad publicity following from environmental damage. Lost sales are not recorded in traditional accounts, they are simply sales that did not occur. Again, because management have no visibility of these, they are unaware of their impact or indeed their existence. Environmental management accounting seeks to give discrete visibility to some of these costs. This highlights their existence and their size. Targets can then be created to focus attention on them and to reduce their size. Let us now consider some of the different environmental management accounting techniques there are to assist in this process. Activity-based costing can be used. For example, cleaning up waste water before it's pumped out into a river will generally be treated as a factory overhead. However, if the cost of cleaning it up can be related specifically to the products that drive that pollution in the first place, then polluting products will be relatively more expensive and so less attractive to produce. However, like all applications of activity-based costing, additional information is required which takes time and money to gather. Input-output analysis follows the principle of what goes in must come out. The physical quantity of raw materials and other inputs is measured. Then the physical quantity of outputs is measured, for example including finished goods, waste and packaging. Inevitably, the weight of outputs will be less than the weight of inputs. The strategic management accountant must try and close the gap between the two, in other words, try to explain where all the inputs have gone. The assumption must logically be that any unexplained gap is likely to imply an environmental impact, pollution of some sort. Work focuses on identifying the size of the gap between inputs and outputs and reducing any identified environmental impact. Flow cost accounting is similar in principle to input-output analysis and seeks to measure and minimise the amount, cost and the impact of packaging. Life cycle costing is also relevant here. Traditionally, environmental impact is associated with the production phases, growth and maturity. However, much of the environmental impact is due to decisions made at the development and introductory phases. In addition, decommissioning often has a significant environmental impact at the end of the product life cycle. Using life cycle costing should ensure that environmental impacts over the life of a product are considered and accounted for. One key piece of information that the strategic management accountant can produce to help identify environmental costs 
is to adapt the cost of quality report headings for use in an environmental sense. Prevention costs is money, time and effort expended to ensure that environmental impact is minimised. For example, designing a production process that minimises the use of energy and water. Appraisal costs include, for example, the money, time and effort required to test environmental impact. For example, testing samples of waste water or carbon-based emissions to ensure they are within the legal limits and within the company policy limits. Internal failure costs may occur if, upon appraisal, environmental impact is discovered but is contained within the business. For example, suppose an environmental analyst tests waste water before it's pumped out into a local river and finds it's polluted. Work will need to be done to remedy this before discharging the waste. This could also interrupt the production processes of the organisation. External failure costs may occur if an undetected environmental impact reaches the outside world. For example, suppose excessively polluted water is in fact flushed out into the river, killing the fish and other local wildlife. Apart from the moral implications of this, this will be damaging to the company's reputation and may well impact on them commercially as a result of the story being made public. Customers may decide to boycott buying the product. In principle, the way to approach environmental costs is similar to quality costs. By spending more and spending wisely on prevention, appraisal costs can be lower and the internal and external failure costs should reduce. In summary, several techniques exist to highlight environmental impact and associated costs. Not only will this help an organisation's corporate social responsibility credentials, it can also help manage costs in a more efficient and effective manner.